to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please be seated. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the light that we access. It takes more than a desire to advance to go forward. It takes more than a well-intentioned desire. It takes light. In this kingdom, it is the light that you access that paves the way for you into a life of exploits and a life of greatness and may that light come over someone tonight in the name of Jesus you know one of the reasons why I love to teach the Word of God is because the Word of God among the many things that it is and it does is that the Word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer God as mighty as he is cannot be committed to the, be to the believer outside of the scope and the provision that the word allows that means if you cannot find it in scripture god is not committed to make it happen in your life it is how he designed this system to work that he has even honored his word above his office and above his reputation so every time the word of god comes it is not one of the many aspects of the service it is a very important aspect of the service because when the word of god comes i may have said it here that the word of god is like a tree if you look at this right here this is holding a cup of water so if you see someone coming to you with a tray you begin to rejoice because the tray carries something on it Ultimately, you want to enjoy what is on the tray, but you cannot enjoy what is on the tray until you can hold the tray. Is that true? So when the word of God is coming to you, you have to understand that the word of God is like a spiritual tray. It comes with it, your lifting, your next level, new anointing, your healing, new grace. So when you embrace the word, you have also demonstrated your commitment to embrace everything that comes with the word. And may the Lord help us tonight. In Jesus' name. I prayed and sought the Lord for what to share. Um, I'm, I've always been very intentional, but I think I'm growing again to be very intentional about the things that I share. Number one, I only teach the things that I believe. And number two... I, I truly teach for transformation and for impact. At the back of the things that I teach, I desire not just for people to see and appreciate the depth of the truth, the dexterity of the communication. More than that, my desire and my drive is to see that every time God gives me an opportunity to bring truth to God's people, that it is communicated in a way that they are able to receive it and that it produces results in their lives. Hallelujah. Praise the, praise the Lord. So, in line with the team, I want to teach on what I title The Price for New Dimensions. The Price for New Dimensions. Believe me, this teaching will bless you. For many of us, we probably are at the end of certain phases in our lives and we're trusting God for more greater horizons, greater dimensions of exploits in ministry, in business. There are keys that make for these kinds of results. And it is important that we access through knowledge the keys that make for new dimensions. Hallelujah. 
the teaching seeks to supply us the spiritual truths that would help us contend for growth to maintain impact and relevance as far as our destinies are concerned. Three scriptures and then God would open our eyes to a few things tonight in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 3. We'll start from verse 12 to 14. Philippians chapter 3. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before, 14, I press. Someone prophesy, say, I press. I press. One more time, say, I press. I press. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Scripture number 2. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Very interesting, challenging and instructive scripture. Can we read together? Ready? One to read. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. One more time. And if any man Think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Hallelujah. Just like the man of God was sharing, I have seen by the privilege of God's grace, I have seen people make impact in ministry, impact in career, in business. I have seen people rise mightily so, mightily used by God. But the surprising thing is, as frequent as I have seen people rise, I have also seen people fall. And I have seen others who did not fall, but stop rising. I have seen people plateau at dimensions accessing the anointing the prophetic the gifts of the spirit ministry growth finances there are two dangers that the bible warns about number one is retrogression number two is to plateau and to limit yourself at a level there are many people who believe that just because you are not going down it means that is the best of you the bible declares that the path of the just that the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. So, so many people are not able to make sustainable advancement. And the reason is because many have neglected some of the truths that you'll be learning. Others may have been ignorant of some or even all of these truths. And so conferences like this, number one, would challenge those who have gone down to show you that there is a road map. The Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies, that though I fall, I will rise. Elevation is still a possibility in this kingdom, that no matter how low, nobody can get lower than Jesus went down to Hades. Yet he came up again and is exalted at the highest position. That already is a pattern for us. That no matter how low you get, there is a power. That same power that raised Christ from right where he was and took him and elevated him. For someone, that same power is lifting you from where you are to where you need to be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then for those who have plateaued at a level. Now, please listen. Let me teach you something up front. We advance in this kingdom by light and life is in faces and dimensions that means the dimension of light you need to access stage a or a level in your life may not necessarily be the only dimension of light and truth you will need to access another level 
Let me tell you what limitations are. Limitations are a letter from your future telling you I am there, but your current level of knowledge cannot take you there. Are we together? When you face limitations that inhibit your progress, see them as letters from your future coming to you to verify that that future you desire is actually there, but this current version of you cannot go there. So when you start out in life, the level of knowledge that brings you to level A or stage A, spiritually, financially, ministerially, and otherwise, you will need more than that to shift to a new season. Now, the challenge is that most people, they stop learning and they stop opening up themselves to new superior dimensions of truth. And you will find out that even though they may not backslide, they plateau at a level and it is dangerous, it is dangerous for your yesterday to look better than your today. Hallelujah. Are we learning? I want to share with us two keys that I've learned as a prize for new dimensions. And it's a charge and then we'll pray. And I trust that God will grant us grace, even if it's in a few minutes, to just pray. While I was at the office, I, I heard the man of God just speaking and prophesying and declaring. And um, for me, I think that it will be good to just follow along that line to also speak over our lives when we are done. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the ways that the Lord helps us to grow and to access light in the kingdom is to personify his thoughts and his intents using men. That means it is consistent with God's character that every time God wants to establish a modus operandi, that means a pathway to achieving certain things spiritually, he will usually find a man and then model that path with that man and keep that man as a reference as his recommendation that every time you want to access that dimension you study that individual for instance every time you want to study on encounters you want to know god you want to press towards the things of god the biblical figure that is recommended is the man jacob jacob is god's idea of the protocol towards an encounter how that he encountered the lord you see that in genesis 28 then in genesis 32 the bible records his failure records the consequences for his failing to discern the lord's presence and then now records an opportunity that god gave him again and how that he wrestled with that man to a point that god named that dimension after jacob he calls himself the god of jacob he says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place he that had clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he says that he will receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation then he says this is the generation of them that seek your face O jacob king james says the original translation is O god of jacob that means we seek your face after the pattern of jacob are we together when you want to study on prevailing prayer the kind of prayer that produces results the individual that personifies that dimension is elijah james chapter 5 when you read from verse 13 it begins by saying that um, the fervent is any man afflicted he said let him pray he says let him call upon the elders and then he says the fervent effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much but he does not leave us in the dark he now says elijah that means this is my idea of fervent effectual prayer elijah was a man of like passion just as we are but he accessed certain keys and he prayed that there be no rain for a period of three and a half years and to show you he was not trying he engaged that same principle again again means mastery when you do something again you have gained mastery and the bible says he that strives for mastery 
is not crowned except he strives lawfully are we learning now there are individuals who are God's idea when God wants to caution you he can use certain individuals for instance remember Lord's wife there is a lesson instead of telling you the whole lesson it just tells you take note of this woman if you understudy the woman in that study is the lesson God's idea of what it means to be blessed in the kingdom is personified in the man Abraham are we together he called an idol worshiper from Ur of the Chaldeans and began to give him instructions from Genesis chapter 12. In fact, that destiny was supposed to be for his father, Terah, but he could not make it. He did not meet the requirements. And God would call Abraham and now began to tell him that if you follow in keeping with what I'm giving you, I will bless you. This and that would happen to you. In you will all the families be blessed. Hallelujah. By the time you study Abraham, we get to Isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 and 2, particularly verse 2. It says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bore you, for I called him alone. Key word, alone. I didn't call him with wealth. I didn't call him with wisdom. I call him alone. So find out how wealth came to his life. Find out how wisdom came to his life. It says, I called him alone and blessed him and increased him hallelujah are we learning now yes so you see that all through scripture you find individuals who represent the thoughts of god as touching certain areas every time we look at a lesson from a doubter if i ask you who in the bible is your lesson for doubting God you will shout Thomas without even if you are not serious spiritually you may shout Thomas because for some reason that individual so this is how it is in scripture one of the ways that we study scripture is to look at men who have passed through a process and at the end of their lives they did not just get results they, are, they, they became God's idea of that pathway that means in studying them you can learn the pathway that leads to that result and right now we want to study one person in the bible who gives us an idea of the price it takes for a new dimension the price it takes to go forward are you ready judges chapter 6 we're studying the man called gideon judges chapter 6 For reference, when you start from verse 1, our, our full text is 6 and 7. The Bible says that the children of Israel did what was wrong in the sight of God. And then he handed them over to their enemies for a period of seven years, the Midians now. And they punished them, they tortured them. When you read on, a prophet came and began to speak, cautioning the people of God. Because that is usually God's pattern. That's how he leads men to repentance. We see that pattern consistent, especially in the Old Testament. That every time people forgot about God, he handed them over to their enemies for a period. And in the midst of their pain, he will send a prophet to tell them, this is why this is happening. Now I leave you with an option. Are you ready to repent or remain slaves? And they would come and say, God, we are ready. Then he would send a man to command deliverance for them. They will enjoy the blessings of obedience, then disobey again. Then the cycle repeats itself like that. Are we together? Now let's start from verse 11 for sake of time. The Bible says, There came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash and all of that. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Verse 12. The Bible says, we are reading to 16. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us? Saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, 
go in this thy might and thou shalt save israel from the hand of the midianites have i not sent thee 15 and he said unto him "O oh my lord wherewith shall i save israel behold my family is poor in manasseh and i am the least in my father's house last verse and the lord said unto him surely i will be with thee and thou shalt smite the midianites as one man so here we see an encounter a young boy called gideon threshing and hiding um the products that he has from the midianites because they will usually come to bully them and collect everything and an angel appears to him and begins to speak to him about his prophetic destiny it is interesting to know that god never calls you by what you are or what you wear he calls you by your prophetic destiny he's seen a man hiding and he says thou mighty man of valor because it's in his character to call things that be not as though they were are we together now so the young gideon just like jeremiah is now complaining look at the understanding that kept that guy you see one of the reasons why they were slaves was not just that they were weak people there was an understanding that encouraged that slavery and as soon as god ap approached him to talk to him listen to his complaint he said i am the least and then i am from the least family don't come and flatter me with such an elaborate and ambitious agenda that i will go to save the nation of israel from the midianites and god encouraged him and he said well i have a problem our fathers once told us that they advanced they did this they conquered nations they saw miracles why have we not seen this kind of thing and he told him go in this your might you know what he was telling him he said this ability to begin to probe into why the miracles stop is strength for you don't stop thinking don't stop pondering start asking that question because there is a secret in it the might there was his understanding understanding is might <laughs> it was not just an impartation he says go in your might i have seen that you sustain another kind of spirit because most of the people kept being slaves not asking why the miracle stopped they didn't ask why the miracles happened in the first place so he's saying gideon there is something happening to your understanding that is equal to might you are probing into why things that were happening now stopped do you know most people do not have this grace this might of superior understanding even if you do not have result the ability to start vetting why it stopped and why it happened is power are we together so you find out that in january every day was favor and then february it stops and you do not ask a question the first question is why did it happen the second question is why did it stop once upon a time in my life everybody would call me and bless me but now it looks like the same people are still around my vicinity but no one seems to beckon on me in this thy might the courage to ask questions to say our fathers told us i've not forgotten it is still in my memory that a time came in the history of israel they were invincible their enemies would see them and begin to shake because there was a hand that was with them why have we not seen it he was asking the angel and remember it's out of the abundance of the hearts that the mouth speaks that means that as he was stretching in that weakness and that limitation his mind was rejecting that level he was asking a question why am i like this can i tell you this i'm sorry to say but respectfully speaking it is one of the reasons why many people in africa don't move forward we don't ask questions why am i like this no favor no grace why is ministry not growing why is my spiritual life not growing can i tell you one of the most superior knowledge that you can have is how to learn what you don't know how to find out 
and how to learn what you do not know how to ask the questions that bring the right answers most believers accept status quo and give it some superstitious explanation well i'm sure god just wants it to be that way or well i'm sure it's the devil but that in itself is not enough answer are we together i just thought to, this is not even what i'm talking about i just thought to draw a lesson i didn't want to just allow the issue of gideon to pass because many of us here seated looking at me you once heard my grandfather was a wealthy man he was a blessed man he was the greatest in the village but now the family is the poorest and no one you have not accessed that might that gideon had to ask questions what did he do that made the results happen what did he stop doing that made the results stop what was i doing that made me so powerful that my spiritual life kept growing from level to level i, I could it was palpable that i was growing the bible said how shall we escape if we neglect carelessness so great is salvation many people who fail do not ask what they are doing or not doing many people who succeed short term don't study their results they only celebrate it can i tell you this celebrating success without thoroughly understanding the dynamics around it you are only implicating yourself for casualty and it is painful to ones was there it is painful to ones rejoice it is painful to ones taste of the grace of god are you learning something tonight so when he said go in your your might most people think oh some impartation had happened the might there is not yet an anointing no the might there is the construct the understanding that courage and fortitude to start probing what took the presence of god away from you gideon what took the presence away from from the nation of israel how could god's covenant people these guys didn't need to lift a finger for jericho to go down now the midianites were oppressing them and gideon had to hide the angel said you've gotten a key don't lose it and god is handing that key over to someone tonight what is the key listen what is the key the courage to probe into why results are happening or why results are not happening whether you are succeeding or failing both of them deserve your study what am i doing that is making my promotion happen every year don't just say thank god promotion is happening no what am i doing can i tell you this when your results come by mastery you do not fear again it is possible that you can activate laws the laws of the kingdom and the laws of the spirit and in truth by luck you can access something that works and then you find out that it does not work again conferences like this bring us to a point of mastery where you can defend your result with your understanding before you graduate a student from a college of education or a university usually there is something called a defense is that true where he comes before a parliament and they try to vet and probe into his understanding so far doesn't matter the topic they are not necessarily just looking at the topic of discussion his acumen his understanding his ability to argue out in defense of the degree or whatever certification he wants to have and on the strength of what he demonstrates they can now say no you are qualified life will ask you what makes you think you will be anointed for 30 years you can enjoy your anointing for two years while it lasts what makes you believe that in the next 10 years you will still be relevant in ministry what gives you the audacity to believe people will still place a demand on your life go in this thy might the ability to probe into why things happen and the ability to probe into why things don't happen you go and read your bible in the earth work of jesus every time people came and asked him questions he respected them read your bible whether it was the woman at the well whether it was john chapter 3 i hope you know it was this probing that better the scripture we use for salvation now 
for God so loved the world. It started as a man asking a question. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. John 3 and verse 1. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these signs and wonders except God be with him. And then Jesus said, now that you've gotten my attention, let me begin to talk to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, then he asks another question. The woman at the well, she began to ask the question and he answered because the seed for an answer is a question. There is no reason why you should have an answer if you are not asking a question. For as long as you are not asking why your life is where it is, for as long as you are not asking why you are making tremendous impact before you celebrate results, be sure you can reproduce it. In my opinion, one of, of all the dominion instructions that were given to man, more than being fruitful, the most powerful for me is replenish. Replenish is where true authority and master lies. The ability to produce that result again and again and again and again and again are we learning so he comes to Gideon and Gideon meets him with a question why is my life like this you are giving me a command and you are telling me that I'm going to be a great warrior I will bring down the Midianites and command salvation for God's people but why are we like this and the angel said keep asking because you see there is a law and when jesus came he opened us up to that law the law is found in matthew chapter 7 from verse 8 for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone not preachers everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh lord why is favor not working in my life Proverbs 18 verse 1 Through desire a man Having separated himself The Bible says he seeketh And intermeddleth with all wisdom Most people would be out of their problems If only they understood This mysterious secret in the kingdom To ask why things are not working why are doors closing for me why do i come to church and the same prophetic word comes on everybody but some re come back with testimonies and others sit down and say the word is not working why i ask a lot of questions i ask god i ask men dead and alive because in that ability to inquire you will find secrets secrets that make for your continuity secrets that guarantee your stability according to Isaiah 33 it is wisdom and knowledge that becomes stabilizers of a man's time and his destiny is someone learning already you are going to pray right now over yourself for the grace to ask questions and continue to ask those questions until answers come go ahead and pray in one minute why am i not walking in the dimension of the anointing that i desire why is ministry not growing why is my finances going down what happened in january that brought me favor and now we match the favor seems to have ended and for those of you who are doing well what am i doing by god and by grace that is producing the results that i now enjoy can i reproduce it can i bring others into that experience hallelujah hallelujah understand the preceding scriptures that we started with he said i do not claim to have apprehended yet philippians chapter 3 from verse 12 how could paul say that 
do you know the level of Paul's understanding when you read Ephesians chapter 3 beginning from verse 3 Paul makes the defense of his spiritual intelligence he says listen I didn't just learn this thing I was initiated Ephesians 3 3 I was called into a fellowship of the mystery it's like an initiation into a body of truth how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I written up in few words verse 4 he said so that when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ that means don't be surprised at the level the depth of my spiritual communication I was drawn in by grace into a fellowship it's like an initiation into a body of understanding and yet that's the same man who is saying I do not claim to have known anything ah. he said this one thing I do I forget the things that are behind he never said I forget the failures that are behind failure is not the only thing you need to forget we're getting there but now let me let me just run quickly because i want us to pray let's study the life of gideon and learn a lesson or two that will help us tonight and god will grant us grace are you ready to learn now Judges 7 verse 1 someone's life is changing in the name of jesus then jerubal who is gideon and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched now let me explain the context for you when god was done working with gideon he sustained the courage and the bible says he blasted a shofar when gideon blasted a shofar 33,000 people came are we together now that was the man who was once weak and mediocre now he had the courage to call that shofar and 33,000 people came and the Bible says that all those people came and met him by the valley verse 2 verse 2 very quickly and the Lord said unto Gideon the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands why lest Israel vounce themselves against me saying my own hand had saved me now follow very carefully there are two principal tests and they also represent the price you must pay if you want to make progress test number one this was the test that was going to reduce the people let's find out what qualified the 300 out of 33,000 what happened that 300 were left and they were the only ones who went and conquered are you ready test number one verse three now therefore go to proclaiming the ears of the people saying whoever is fearful and afraid let him return and depart early from mount gilead and there return how many people <laughs> my goodness and my god believers are, are we are we students of scripture that out of 33,000 people who came, 22,000 were in fear. And he said, listen, don't frustrate our journey. So we give you a chance now. If you don't believe in your destiny enough, if you are not convinced that it's worth giving your all, I give you a chance. Go back. Ladies and gentlemen, how many went back? 22,000. And there remain. I understand that God spoke to you and you wrote the vision and he told you you will be shaking the nations I understand that he told you when you had that shofar he said blow the trumpet in Zion I know that you have come out but just because you showed up to honor that sound does not mean you will get there test number one is the test of courage it takes courage hear me the first price it takes to be a trailblazer to be consistent to weary limitations till you win is the price of courage courage is derived from conviction listen carefully 
Courage is not outsourced, it is generated. One more time. Courage is not outsourced, it is generated. Generated from a conviction. God is speaking to someone already. The Lord said unto Gideon, the people are too many. Please go to verse 3. Let's just stay at verse 3. God is speaking to someone now. Your family members, they seem too many. Who will rise from there and break? I know you come from a crown of 5,000 people. And just because a family meeting was held, don't make a mistake of believing that everybody who came there intends to get to the other side. Test number one. Who is he that will not be fearful? Who is he that will not be afraid? He said, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and return early. Don't waste our time. And the Bible says 22,000 people for God's sake. They said, Gideon, we are returning. Remember the dream God showed you, I'm still returning. Remember, you've come too far. You left your house, I'm, I'm still returning. Can I tell you, many have returned in ministry. Many have returned in business. Many have returned over their health. Many have returned. I'm here to encourage someone, pass this test. If it is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I pray for you, you have to know that there are tests you must go through. You may not like what I'm teaching you, but if it's advancement you intend to have, there is a test. Behind every genuine result you see is a testament of endurance and courage. Make no mistake to think the anointing just came and moved people. Uh-uh. Before the anointing came, you know the audacity it takes to position yourself to defy the crowd, defy opinions. We live in a world that does not respect the sacrifices of people. The stamina and the staying power. The man of God is just lucky. The businessman, I think he was just lucky. Do you know the pain and the tears? Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No, you can get to the field by mistake. Please listen carefully because God is speaking to you. The test of courage. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Let's hurry up. Someone's life must change this night. The first four verses, Deuteronomy 20. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, he says, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Hold on. You would think that that God would take away the chariots. He says, I'm with you, but you will still see chariots. You will still see horses. You will still see people more than you. Oh, David, when you see the size of Goliath, don't be afraid. Remember the one that is with you. Forget about the size of the adversary. Oh, someone is ready to shake. The devil will make you focus on the Egyptians. Focus on chariots. As though God were not with you. He said, wait, hold on, hold on. Look up, please. Please settle down, look at me. The only way to see horses and chariots is when you go out to battle, not when you stay in. The courage to even go out is why you will see adversaries. Can I tell you, there are people who it looks like they don't have challenges. It's not that the devil is not attacking them. Is that they themselves have not even taken the first step of courage to their destiny. They are, how did you know there are altars fighting you? Is it not when you made a commitment that I will be different? The altars had you. They said we stopped your father, we stopped your grandmother. Who is this man who is rising like a reed taken out of fire? When you go out to battle, it is not unusual to find forces that are greater than you. 
no that sickness in your body those bills you stand and you make up your mind that everybody lived in a rented apartment forever but in the name of Jesus I will build and you ask how much can I buy a house and they tell you 30 million and you check your account and see that you have 4,000 you laugh at yourself feeling like a fool remember the jealousy of God is standing by you to defend you please sit down and it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle he said the priest shall approach and speak to the people we are reading to four and shall say unto them hear O covenant people ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies let not your hearts faint fear not and do not tremble neither be ye terrified of them why verse 4 for the Lord your God is he that goeth before you to fight for you against your enemies and save you Can I tell you, ask any man of God that you respect. Ask your man of God, coming here, look, look, let me tell you, the stories of men are the exploits of courage in the midst of pain. There are people today, they were told they would not survive certain things. They refused that I would not die. They saw death again and again. I have a choice. But I've made up my mind. No way. There are people who refuse. When one door closes, they don't have time morning. They force another one to open. Listen, we live in a world where people find pleasure justifying mediocrity. And they sit down there and use very justifiable reasons to remain there. They destroyed our house in 2007. That's why I don't have a house till now. It looks like an obvious answer, but it's not the right one. Please listen carefully. God is speaking to us. Test number one is the test of courage. Someone shout and say in the name of Jesus. I conquer fear. The fear of opinions. The fear of failure. The fear of the past. The fear of the future. Turn it into prayer right now. Turn it into prayer right now. Shapakato Seketa. In the name of Jesus, I conquer fear. I conquer fear. Fear over my tomorrow. Fear over my destiny. The Lord is with me, standing by me like a mighty, terrible one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 31. Let's hurry up. Please sit down. Someone's spirit is firing up this night. Deuteronomy 31 from verse 6 to 8. Listen. By the time I'm done teaching you, believe me, a grace will come on your life this night. You will walk out of this place knowing that you encountered the grace of God in reality. Be strong and of a good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the lord thy god he it is that god goeth with you he will not fail thee nor forsake thee verse 7 we are reading to 8 and moses called out joshua and said unto him in the sight of all israel be strong and of good courage for thou must go with these people unto the land which the lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Verse 8. And the Lord, he it is that goeth before you. He will be with you and he will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Please look up. Whenever God speaks to you about your future, God does not talk to men like he's talking to men. God talks to men like he's talking to himself. One of the ways you will know is God speaking. 
is because when God gives you a destiny instruction, he will even start by saying, fear not. Because the size of what he will tell you, there is no logic and no, you will feel stupid for believing in him. There are many times you will regret training your ears to hear God because the excuse you would have used now, you can't say it's not him that spoke to you. That God speaks to you and tells you in your lifetime, I will use you to build a house for all your 13 brothers. And he said, God, don't flatter me. Just tell me I will succeed. I will pay my school fees. As at the time God is speaking, you are hoping you are still 20% gathering the money for your rent. I told you that God does not speak sympathizing with your current situation. He speaks as touching your destiny. When he finds you hiding, he does not say, oh thou hiding one. He says, oh thou man of valor. The same way God is seeing someone who is weak and saying, oh thou prophet, do you not know? that that grace and that unction of the prophetic is on you and you are saying god don't flatter me the prophetic nobody everybody was an idol worship by my family the test of courage whoever is fearful go back Twenty-two thousand people sir went back let's continue judges 6 and Judges 7 now verse 4 are you ready so the first test is the test of courage maybe I should add two or three, two scriptures just to buttress on the issue of courage second Timothy 1 and verse 7 very popular scripture second timothy 1 and verse 7 before we look at the second test for god had not given joshua selman the spirit of fear that means fear is a gift look up look at me uh -huh. that when you find fear at work in you you received it anything given can be rejected is that true the bible said god has not given that means someone else gave it God has not given us the spirit of fear look how powerful fear is it takes three spiritual forces to dislodge fear power love and a sound mind don't downplay fear fear is the spirit that foreruns every other spirit every other spirit stands waiting for fear to open a door no spirit will enter a door that fear has not opened did you hear what i said every spirit is at the mercy of fear they wait patiently for fear to open that door then every other spirit can come god has not given us the spirit of fear let me tell you your destiny will require courage you will stand face to face before mountains you will stand face to face before some of you life threatening issues maybe some of you are already even standing in front of those things who are down mountain you should say before Zerubbabel when that beast was roaring six fingers and six toes even the veterans of war in Israel became afraid and a young teenager who came to serve his brother's food he heard the voice of that beast and he went and stood there and he said what is happening who is this they said Goliath Goliath and he looked at him he said please give me a chance to do something to this man he went to Saul the brothers drove him and said go back before he kills you for nothing and he went to King Saul and Saul said from what tribe I want to know the covenant that backs you that's all I need to know when he stood before him with a sling Goliath said am I a dog I will kill you but respect me you must be such a stupid boy you come to me with a sling look at your warriors you've been you've been a shepherd with sheep your veterans are afraid and when he was done talking you would think that David would kneel down and say I'm sorry I'm just a teenager David said let me even tell you how you will die 
this sling will bring you down your very sword is what i will use to remove your head ah goodness courage can i tell you this some of you after this conference you may not have money to buy sharp sand but go and stand where that land is Hear me you may not have a ministry now and nobody's placing a demand on you but go to the bush where your audience is stand there and hold a stick and begin to preach like i did many years ago and decree and declare by the spirit sense the anointing there train your gifts in the bush train your anointing right there because sooner or later the one who is a way maker will make the way for you Can I tell you this? Fear puts men in bondage. Hebrews 2.15, I believe. And to deliver them who through the fear of death. 2.15 Hebrews. Where all their lifetime. That means fear can capture a man's lifetime. Do you know what a lifetime is? From when you were born till when you die. Fear can literally possess a man's lifetime. Not just moments in your destiny. A whole lifetime. Courageous people are those who win in our world today. Those who are overly conscious of what people say. I made a statement. Who liked it? Who commended it? You, you are ready for failure forever. There are times you will have to stand alone. Can I tell you something? You see, the ways of God does not always show the wisdom behind it immediately there are times that you will look foolish for 10 years is the 11th year that will show you were wise for 11 years but the courage to stay when Noah was shouting and saying rain is coming hear me rain is coming for 120 years he was shouting they laughed at him he said I'm giving you a chance all the animals were wise they didn't argue as soon as they got the call in peace seven by seven two by two the animals who could run faster than men who could climb trees who were even more technical they quietly came and all the men who were helpless they stood there arguing it was god who closed the door and the bible says the rain was structured such that heaven gave its own rain earth gave its own rain what whoever it meets in the middle and that was where it killed everybody can I tell you this? Most of us in our world will never be great because of the fear of being alone. There are people who will leave God a thousand times to gain friends. There are people who will abort their destiny a thousand times because of acceptance. Our, our generation has such an obsession for acceptance. Don't get me wrong acceptance is one of the psychological indices that make for fulfillment i understand but let me tell you sincerely if it is destiny there are many times is at the end that the vision speaks but you don't start building at the end you start building alone foolishly sometimes and as your wisdom unfolds god now honors you Once upon a time in this Lagos, there were people who were tying water. Is that true? Water like what you call pure water today. They were tying it in a leather. You still remember? And someone looked and said, no, water is an essential. We can package this in, in, a, in a more intelligent way. Do you know the risk it took? What if they failed? Question, did they fail? The man who builds a hotel with 130 rooms. Question, who signed that I will come and sleep in your hotel? The pastor who buys a land and builds a church. Did anybody sign a covenant with him that I will guarantee you midweek I am there. Church service I am there. Somebody say courage. courage. My dear worshippers, when you write your songs, does anybody give you any guarantee that I will come and sing? 
Everything you are celebrating today is the other side of courage. The other side of courage. The other side of courage. Seven up. You know seven up that you take? I'm sure you know how the name seven up came. Seven up just means six down, seven up. The man failed six times. Woefully. He named that product after his results. Today you drink it. But behind what you are drinking is the pain of a man. Look at me. I always wondered why God through the prophet would tell Naaman to go and bath seven times. God, you are mighty. What is seven? I later found out that is, there is something about the law of process that was taught in that miracle. Do you know that after Naaman took his bath six times, you thought there would be evidence of cure to encourage him. He was still as dirty and scaly and as tattered as that. Five minutes to your miracle, it will still not look like it. This is the thing about God that you have to understand. Mm -mm. Can I tell you this? Go and ask Elijah. He prayed and said, check for me. Nothing. Prayed and said, check for me. Nothing. Seven times. Even the sixth time, nothing. The same way you are seated today. You don't know it's tomorrow that prophecy has written. That you will be smiling as it is right now. Nothing is in your life. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. The prophet said, By this time tomorrow. You thought a cloud would suddenly start moving, and the nation of Israel would say, Wow, a cloud is forming. After the prophet spoke, I'm sure even him, he went back and said, God, I've spoken. Don't let these people kill me. A woman that can eat her child, is it a prophet she will not eat? By the next day, everybody woke up. Where is that stupid prophet? Playing with our intelligence in the name of the Lord. You said today, this is that day. They forgot it was God that made the day. Four lepers. Why sit we here and die? Let's go and die in the place where there is plenty. There's a lesson there. It's better to die in a place of supply than to run away out of fear. The, the guys were wise. They said anyway we are going to die. So it's wiser and cheaper. And when they took that step of faith, the Lord amplified them and it was like the sound of chariots. And they said, ah, Samaria has now gathered allies to come and fight us. When they got there, all they saw was supplies. Can I tell you this? Someone by this teaching, you are receiving the courage to do something that four years ago, you wrote it, God told you, start. You've been afraid and sitting there. Go and register the company. Oh God, you know the way Nigeria is now. I'm waiting until my uncle, he said he's contesting for election. Woe to him who puts his strength in a man. If God gives you the marching order, sustain the courage and the grace to go. Can I tell you, sometimes you will fail obeying God. Oh, I wish you would not. There are times you will fail obeying God. When you fail obeying God, allow the one who takes the glory to also take the shame. You've always heard me say this. If you are the one taking the shame, you have been taking the glory too. It's a deal. Whoever takes, when you say God, take everything. You mean take both the glory and the shame. If on account of my hearing you, this shame comes upon me, take responsibility for my obedience. Please sit down. Let me give us the last test. The price for new dimensions. Price number one is the price of courage. Unbending resoluteness that is not outsourced 
but generated. Lord, I know you have spoken to me that from this family where no one has risen, that you are going to lift me and the nations will celebrate your workings upon my life. I believe. What is the next step? Start moving. To where? Keep moving. Do you believe I am God? Keep moving. To where? To Lagos. Lord, I am in Lagos. What is the next step? Trust me. What kind of answer is that? And all your classmates call you and say, oh, is it your picture I saw in NMPC? He said, for where? I'm still here. I'm in Lagos. And they said, but you too, you know, some of you, sometimes you can be very stupid and you just stand and say, Lord, everybody may seem to have moved forward. Maybe that's someone's testimony now. God just locked you up and all you are doing is praying and fasting, praying and fasting, studying scripture, praying and fasting, reading books, praying and fasting, praying and fasting, and then learning materials. You know so much, but the platform to put it to work is not there. God is doing something with you. Let me warn you, if God says, wait, wait. Every time you rush seasons, you will always give birth to the Ishmael that will fight Isaac. God is a God of speed, but God does not rush. Two days to your breakthrough, Satan can bring an offer in one day that can make you birth Ishmael. And forever you will have to live with that battle. Part of the way we gain speed is by waiting. It's a mystery that when we wait, we truly run. Is someone learning? Obtain courage. Do not fear. Refuse fear. When angels appear, they tell men, fear not. It is for a reason. Test number two. Judges 7, 4. Hmm. Are you ready for the second test? Now, this one, in fact, if you did not get anything I shared here, please don't forget this. This is a life-changing secret that I want to share with you now. You will thank your man of God for the rest of your life if you get what I'm showing you now. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. The first test reduced them but there are still 10,000 others. He said, bring them onto the water. Hmm. And I will try them for you there. Listen carefully. And it shall be that of whom I say to you, this is the one who goes with you from that test. Then he shall go with you. What is the test? Verse 5. Please give us verse 5. So he brought the people Onto the water. Are you ready now? And the Lord said to Gideon, they are going to approach their interaction with this water in two ways. Study them and use their encounter with this water to filter them. Everyone that lapped on the water with his tongue as a dog lapped, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knees to drink look up let me teach you a mystery here do you know what this means don't forget that when he called them they came out of their homes they had started walking some of them returned that means everybody had left home their energy had been spent are you getting the point now now he brought them to the place of some level of resolve
and because of the result in the fellowship no more prayer no more hearing god you are now bowing down to drink that water i'm happy with the ten thousand that is coming i'm happy with the 30 members there is no pressing no fasting no building gideon study their approach to that which gives them comfort at this level the assignment of water is to quench your test when you are a thirsty man who has been working for a long time when you see water you will not know there are other treasures in the war front greater than that water is someone getting that now the second test you see let me tell you this there is you have to conquer the deception of current success you you want to go forward you must conquer the deception of complacency that comes as a result of your current achievements it is not only failure that kills success kills more than failure many people stop working with god many people deflated their passion for growth their passion to be mentored their passion to learn after all there's results now i've started prophesying it's not very clear but i've started prophesying here and there the anointing has started working it looks like a few members are coming now and god is saying this is only a test gideon study them this test you will not find out immediately it will take time for you to know those who will separate who will be separated and he said anyone have you ever seen a dog settle when a dog is eating it does not eat and lie down and just remain there it's ready to move in fact parts of the body is already moving once it is done it moves to what it was doing before that temporary success it says those who lap they are still on their feet they are just fetching it my feet my instrument of motion is still in place but those who bow down upon their knees to bow down means to make it Lord over you. You have made the success Lord over you. You have made the little exposure consume you such that you've forgotten that you were on a mission. Is someone learning now? that venue and then ICC and the rates were something else but ICC they would not give it for that frequency of programs and then this one that God brought us by his grace it was about the biggest auditorium that can be given for that is not built as a church auditorium not even discussing the price per use you won't believe it and then I sent a delegation to meet the man and the man said no way Pentecostals scatter chairs, they scatter this. I invested so much, I'm not ready to lose my money for nothing. And I said, God, but you spoke to me. I'm not saying, I hope you, I, I hope. The highest royalty, I am undone before your glorious majesty. Someone pray. The test of courage. The Lord, when you speak, I will not only listen, I will move. If I fail, let me fail hearing you. My soul, fear not. My soul, fear not over your finances my soul fear not over your spiritual life my soul fear not in the name of jesus christ fear not he stands behind you 
like a mighty terrible one the second test lord as you lift me take away the influence of my results over my life let it not influence me to a point that i forget you to a point that i stop living by the values that brought me that honor someone lift your voice and cry before your maker let it not be that when you have built houses and your flocks and herds are multiplied that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this way but thou shall remember the Lord thy God thou shall remember the Lord thy God Hallelujah. Father, we ask you to help us. You have used the life of Gideon and the strategy that empowered him to use 300 men and defeat the Midianites. Lord, there are mountains there are heights, there are levels and there are realms that we have not gotten to, that we need to get to. We are in seasons in our lives where we need to make notable advancements, notable progress. Lord, we pray that the test of courage, may we pass that test. The test of courage, may we pass that test. The test of courage may we pass that test Amen. and then oh God I pray that as you honor us and as you give us results before the nations before our contemporaries before all men may you grant us the stamina to not be distracted by results Amen. That we will celebrate your hand and your workings in our lives but not to the detriment of our advancement help us oh god that in the midst of our results may we remain focused Amen. may we remain disciplined Amen. may we remain spiritual Amen. may we remain committed Amen. may we remain humble Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. And Lord, as we humble ourselves before you, let there be no limit to the degree and the dimension with which you will lift us. Amen. Now in the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with the angel over this house and then the graces that are here represented and I decree and declare over your life that the courage to keep moving until you leap over a wall until you cross barriers to the next season may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you for anyone here who probably because of mistakes that you have made the glory that you once enjoyed it is now ichabod it looks like the dimension of lifting you experienced has seemed to leave you the relationships the connections right now i declare the same grace that grew back the hair of samson i stand by the power of the prophetic let there be restoration now restoration of relationships restoration of dignity restoration of finances restorations of joy and by the power of the prophetic like moses commanded the nation of israel to go forward 
in the name of Jesus Christ go forward go forward to new heights to new levels to new dimensions spiritually go forward financially go forward in the name of Jesus Christ and every power that has fought you until this conference to not allow you breakthrough powers of ancestry orchestrations in heavenly places I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I have a in the name of Jesus be delivered from those powers now let there be testimonies for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ testimonies in ministry testimonies in family testimonies in your walk with God finally I pray for you everything that has stolen your passion for God your passion for prayer your passion for the secret place your zeal for spiritual things distractions that have come through relationships distractions that have come through your results in the name of Jesus I fan the flames of your spiritual life I fan the flames of your prayer life I fan the flames of your word life in the name of Jesus Christ to everyone who is sick in body I declare be healed now by the power of the Holy Spirit please we have to wrap up now I didn't have the time to prophesy and pray but if the man of God does allow you please even if you are not a pastor if they do allow you please do come tomorrow because I'll have a session to teach and let me have some time to prophesy and also pray for the sick and just declare release over your destiny may the Lord bless you and honor you in Jesus name